Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, CPC. Today is June the 4th, and here we are at our English service at 11.30 this morning. So we welcome you all. Wonderful sunny day, and great to see all of you here in person and all those who are online as well. I will start with a couple of announcements, and just to let you know, it's in the bulletin. You can download it from us, our website, and for us here, you may have a copy uh, with you. Uh, the first one is a big, the big give. Oh boy, it was a wonderful day yesterday for those who came out. Weather was beautiful, uh, people were here, and we saw a big, big thank you for all those who helped organize, helped donate items, and carry out this uh, event that we were able to have uh, to bless our community and to bless us, because we met so many people from our community, and uh, so we just pray that you know, God will continue to work uh, in their lives and in our lives too, as we uh, continue to build uh, this community. Uh, later in, in the service, we will be celebrating uh, and also ordaining uh, he Helen Ling, and so she's here with us, and uh, we'll um, hear more later. Um, later at 2 p.m. as well, wonderful to have our second Mandarin worship service. Uh, 
are, we, we have a lot more uh, members who are speaking Mandarin, and so we welcome them as well, and as we are able to celebrate uh, and have a service with them once every two months. Um, in terms of um, fun times, um, Let's Lunch Together has been, we're just taking a break for June, and we'll start again in July. Um, let's fellowship and play together. So we have a badminton, uh, what's today? Volleyball and badminton next week. Um, and then also if anyone's interested in ping pong, we have a couple of people who've inter uh, expressed interest and they'll be after that at, at 3 p.m. Summer camp, we've mentioned many, oh, downtown fellowship, all right, <laughs> if that's what's on the, on the screen. Uh, we will have one at 7.30 this Friday and it is gym night, so please join us for some exercise. Um, and summer day camp, we've mentioned a couple of times, it's Ju July is around the corner and so there will be six weeks for the children uh, for summer camp. Uh, there's uh, another fun fellowship time and uh, for exercise as well, and this is golf day. Uh, Sunday, July the 16th at 2 p.m., partnering with Celebration uh, Presbyterian Church. So for those who are interested in golfing, uh, please contact Alan. And our sanctuary air conditioner, nice and cool? Yes, because we have a nice new air conditioner. And, uh, you know, we came in this morning, mm, it's nice and cool. Uh, and yes, that's because we have a new one. And so thanks again that we uh, you know, installed the new air conditioner. It did cost around 23,000, so all your donations are welcome, as well as those who have already donated. Thank you. We've already raised 8,000 out of $23,000, and so we give you uh, thanks. And uh, we do have a financial update in the bulletin. Um, just our offering, we do give uh, weekly what our offering uh, status is for our general offering, our Thanksgiving offering, and our missions offering. And I believe, what else do I have? <laughs> yes, prayer requests. Uh, we do pray every Wednesday, so if you are interested, wanting us to pray for you, the staff also pray. But every Wednesday, there's a group of us who, and everyone's welcome to join us on Wednesday uh, to pray at uh, 7 o'clock. Um, and if you have any prayer requests, please put it in the offering uh, envelope, uh, boxes that are actually available in the front and at the back. So if you want to give offering as well as your prayer request, it's uh, in, uh, available. And your COVID protocols have not changed. I mean, we changed it in May, uh, which basically we've lifted every restriction. Uh, but you may mask if you want to. That is up to you. Okay. And the last one, we'll actually invite uh, pa Alan, Pastor Alan and Mary. Good morning. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce to you Marion Milimachi and her husband, Stephen. Uh, will you give them a warm welcome? Uh, though uh, very young, uh, Marion comes with a wealth of experience in ministry, especially with children, and uh, she, we invited her to join our pastoral team and she will just diversify us uh, in terms of uh, ministry skills and uh, passion and age and everything good. I'm going to let her say hi to you. Hello, hello. It's been great to meet some of you already this morning. I'm so excited. I've already met some of your children and grandchildren downstairs. Uh, I'm excited to get to know you and all of your families and children as uh, the weeks go on. So please feel free to introduce yourself to me or my husband. Um, whenever you see us around, just say hello. We don't bite. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning. We begin today's service with a call to worship. Out throughout the service, our congregational responses are highlighted in bold. Holy are you, source and creator of all things. We praise you for your gift of life. Holy are you, Son and Redeemer of all things, we thank you for your gift of new life. Holy are you, Spirit and Sustainer of all things, bear witness to your truth and worship your holy name. 
ever three and ever one. Our prayer of ador adoration and confession in response to the call to worship. Holy God, you are three in one and one in three. Praise to you, source of life, maker of heaven and earth, who created us in your image and called us good. Praise to you, Jesus Christ, born in our flesh, to teach us how to love and offer us grace and mercy. Praise to you, Holy Spirit, for the energy you bring us to greet each day as a gift. Holy God, three in one and one in three. We praise you for your mystery and mercy. Reveal to us how to live as your people and witness to your wonder and grace. Amen. God of mystery and mercy, you know the details of our lives. You see the sin and the sorrow we bear. You see the problems and the possibilities we face. You see how we fit into the world around us and how we rub each other the wrong way. We confess we do not always see what you see. Open our eyes to the truth of our lives and touch us with your grace. Let's hear the assurance of pardon. The Apostle Paul reminds us that from now on we regard no one from a human point of view. If anyone's, anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. Thanks be to God that we can all make a new start through God's gift of forgiveness and peace. And since we are reconciled to God in Christ, let us share the peace with one another. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Well, let's remain standing as we begin our uh, songs of praise and worship to, uh, to our Lord this morning as we sing together. Today is Trinity Sunday, as you may have guessed from our readings and prayers this morning, three in one, one in three. And God of Wonders is our first song.
strong and mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no other, your name, let the nation sing it louder, cause nothing has the power to save.
Please be seated. As we journey along together with believers around the world, let us hear this reading from Psalm chapter 8, New International Version. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Good morning. The scripture reading today is taken from 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 15, New International Version. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burnt up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Linda, for reading this morning's scripture reading. And a good morning to all of you. It's good to be back after being away for three weeks. Uh, Shirley and I took our two boys to Seoul, uh, South Korea, and had a wonderful, wonderful time. Um, Good food, great weather, and uh, how uh, Korea has changed since we first visited it um, right after we got married, about 30 years ago. Anyways, um, about the hardest thing to um, come back from a holiday like that is the, uh, the time change. So if you are receiving emails from me at 3 in the morning, it's, you know what I'm doing. I'm just uh, fighting to get back to Toronto time. Uh, while away, we were uh, able to visit Yoido Full Gospel Church, one of the largest churches in the world. Um, last week, we visited Stone Church. Um, but as wonderful as, you know, like when you're traveling, you live in hotels, uh, you go to different churches, it's always wonderful to be back. Sleep in your own bed, but to worship together. So this is family now, and uh, it's so good to be back. Let's pray before we hear God's word. Gracious God, thank you for the family of God and for this local family of sisters and brothers who love you, who uh, yearn to uh, live by your word and serve you and lord as we did yesterday in the big give uh, we commit ourselves to ministering in this community wherever we are living we are committed to serving the baldwin village neighborhood and we ask the lord that you would bless this community through us in the name of jesus and as we ponder your word this morning teach us through the holy spirit father son holy spirit teach us that we may live your truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
We've been talking um, once uh, a month on the first Sunday of each month on this theme, rebuilding our church uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. And you will notice in the scripture reading this morning a lot of references to fire. Fire will reveal the truth of each believer's faith. Are you a true believer? Fire will test the quality of each believer's work. Are you offering to God your best? Fire will burn up any ministry efforts that will not last until the day when Jesus comes again. Will your legacy stand the test of time? But what is this fire? Is the Lord literally going to send fire upon us? What is this fire that we're referring to or, what, or that the Ap Apostle Paul was warning the church about? We've uh, been hearing about the devastating fires in Halifax, how people have uh, had to be evacuated at a moment's notice and people have lost homes all their belongings to these ravaging fires. Do we know of any firefighters in our midst? Anyone? It's not a, a typical uh, occupation for, for us, for this community. We have uh, uh, a few policemen, uh, one paramedic that I know of, um, in my 30 years of ministry, I only knew of one firefighter who was a church member. Um, but um, a trained fireman will recognize different kinds of fires that uh, are lit on uh, different hazardous materials. What chemical flammables uh, will cause different fires and... Uh, they will know how to put them out. And when they arrive right at the scene, they have to quickly assess the situation, what's burning, why it's burning, and know how to put it out. I think in the same way, um, as Christians, we need to know the fires that we will experience in our lives. We will need to be trained fire fighters. Spiritually speaking, we will need to be a fire tested church. In this message, uh, we will learn about three different kinds of fires that every believer will encounter and experience. And we will need to know the different kinds of fires that we will encounter and how to deal with these fires to not be burned up. But let's be clear, um, this is serious. Um, how how I mean, this candle is the only fire here. How long do you think you could hold your hand over this flame, this tiny little flame? Five seconds? It's, it's no wonder. I mean, fire was used to be a cruel torture, right? To be burned at the stake or to be tortured by fire. Um, people would rather leap out of tall buildings than to be burned by fire. But the only experience we have with fire is maybe when we're cooking, we get splattered with bacon oil. Or, you know, as you're taking out the cupcakes from the oven, you, you accidentally touch your hand to the oven, and it leaves a scar. And if you see burn victims, you know they're disfigured. They're, they're scarred for life. So the fire that is referenced in Scripture and that we will talk about this morning is a serious business. And um, so I, I want for us to be very uh, careful to what scripture is saying. There are three uh, different kinds of fires that we will experience. The first is the fire of God's discipline. If we're building wrongly, if we're wrong and we're building God's church, we will encounter fire, the fire of God's discipline. In, in um, Hebrews chapter 12, beginning from verse 6, the Lord disciplines the one he loves. He chastens everyone he accepts as his 
son or daughter, endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. But how much more should we submit to the father of spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. You don't have to raise your hand, but how many of you have experienced this fire, this pain? Just reflect. In your life, are you feeling this pain? Why do you feel this pain? Because you have done something wrong in God's eyes. When will it stop? Well, it's simply when you stop doing what's wrong, when you confess and repent of this wrong thing to the Lord. That's it. You feel pain in your life, and you reflect, why is this happening? And God's Spirit says to you, you've done something wrong. Recognize it, confess it, repent it, and I will lift that pain. The Bible says, flee from sin. Flee from sin. 1 Corinthians 6.18, flee from sexual immorality immorality 1 Corinthians 10:14 flee from idolatry 1 Timothy 6:11 flee from the love of money is this pain is this fire avoidable is it well yes and no it's avoidable if you never sin <laughs> but it's not avoidable uh, because we know we constantly sin and, and given that we are God's children, he will not stop until we stop what we're doing wrong. God loves us. He wants us to change, to become more like his son, Jesus. Until and unless we stop sinning, we will regularly experience this pain. So as we strive together to be a building community, encouraging one another, building up the people of God. If we have sin in our lives, we will experience this pain. We will experience this fire. And we will need to recognize it in our lives. Just take a moment right now, just before the Lord, examine your heart. Lord, is there something that is not right in my life according to your word in your eyes. Lord, I confess, I repent. Please take this pain away from me. Amen. That's the first kind of fire that you will encounter. The second kind of fire that you will encounter is from the enemy. The fire from the enemy's attack. In Ephesians chapter 6, and you will notice that when Paul says, put on the full armor, he's not saying, if you need, if you are attacked by the enemy, put on the full armor of God. Scripture says, put on the full armor of God, expecting that you will be attacked by the enemy. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, 
Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckle around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Friends, you will experience the fiery attacks of the enemy. So what do you, what do you feel in your life? You will feel pain. Why are, you be, why are you being attacked? Why are you being attacked by the enemy? Well, the first reason is um, that you have crossed the line somewhere. This is a wonderful diagram. I've, I've reflected and studied upon this diagram for many, many hours. Satan, uh, represented by the ferocious wolf, is a defeated enemy. He's chained up. But there is a line that God's word says, don't cross. Don't cross this line with regards to money. Don't cross this line with regards to relationship. Don't cross this line with regards to the things of the world, the desires of the world, the temptations of the world. But if we step across that line, we are putting ourselves at risk. And then we wonder, why is Satan attacking me? Why am I feeling the attack of the evil one? It's because you've crossed that line. How many times in our lives we suffer unnecessary suffering and pain because we've crossed that line? That's the first reason why you might be attacked. The second reason is you may be doing everything right. And because you have done everything right, you're so intent on following God's word and living your life according to God's word in righteousness and holiness and purity that Satan is jealous. He wants to bring you down and he will attack you. If we want to faithfully build up this church, we will experience the attack from the enemy. So when will it stop? Well, Perhaps when we stay clear of that line. But we don't want to stop being faithful and um, in our serving of the Lord. So we put on the whole armor of God. We put on the armor of God. Even when we don't feel the attack of the enemy, we just simply put on the armor of God. Um, the Bible says, whereas the Bible says, flee from sin, we are to stand against the enemy. We are to stand. Uh, Ephesians 6, 11, put on the full armor of God so that you could take your stand against the devil's schemes. 6, 13, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, to resist to remain firm and steadfast. Is this kind of pain avoidable in your life? Yes and no. Uh, if, if you stay clear from going across that line that scripture says don't cross, then you have nothing to fear about uh, from the enemy. But on the other hand, if you are so intent on serving the Lord, offering your lives as a sacrifice, pleasing sacrifice of worship to the Lord, the enemy will attack. And that's when you need to have your armor in place. The final kind of fire is the fire of the refiner. Sometimes even when you're doing everything right, you will encounter fire. This is a, a topic that we don't normally talk, at least I've never preached on it. I don't know if you've ever heard a, a message on the refiner's fire. Malachi chapter 3 verse 2 says, He will, referring to God, He will be like a refiner's fire. He will sit as a refiner and purify us like silver and gold. 
why do you purify anything? Why do you put gold into that little urn and subject it to extreme fires? Well, it's to burn off all impurities so that you can be not 18 carat, 24 carat, 99.9% pure. And we know as believers, no matter how faithful we are, we, we're still not pure, are we? And so the refiner, the good Lord, subjects us to his fire to purify us. Because God is pure, and God wants his children to be pure. The uh, disciple John um, explained refining in um, gardening uh, terms. Uh, John said of God, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. Jesus said this, but recorded by John. Jesus said, I'm the true vine, my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. That's the sinful part. God's created us to bear fruit. Any branch that does not bear fruit, snip, prune, that gets cut off. You will experience as Christians the parts in your life that do not bear fruit for the Lord, he will cut it off. And you will feel pain. But listen to this. Every branch that does bear fruit, you're doing something right. You are bearing fruit. What does God do? He prunes, he cuts, so that it will be even more fruitful. That's the refining process. So what, what do you feel in your life? You feel pain. This pruning, this cutting, this refining why are you being refined? Well, you've done nothing wrong. In fact, you have done everything right. But God is refining you so that you can bring more glory to him, so that you can be even more fruitful, so that you can be even more equipped to serve him. When will it stop? When will this pain in my life stop? Well, whenever the Lord thinks you're ready for the next level of faithfulness and service. The Bible says, flee from sin, stand against the enemy, but persevere, persevere until the Lord says you are ready for the next level of faithfulness and service. James 1, 2, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, whenever you face pain in your life through different things, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Blessed is the one, James 1.12, who perseveres under trials because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know, people who've gone through the Lord's refining fire tend to have a summary statement because they've gone through this painful time but also growing time in their life they they naturally make a conclusion i can i can point to many examples um, and uh, I will invite you to, in your scripture reading, to look at biblical characters and then look at the end of their life, what they say. Uh, you could look at Moses, who said uh, at the end of his life, I will proclaim the name of the Lord, praise the greatness of our God. He is the rock, his works are perfect, all his ways are just. And remember, this was when God told Moses, you're not going to go into the promised land. After all I've done for you, Lord, God says, you're not going to go to the promised land. But Moses is able to say, all your ways are just. He 
he's gone through the fire. Look at Joshua. Joshua's final message in Joshua chapter 23. Joshua said, I am now about to go the way of all the earth. You know with all your heart, soul, and soul that not one of all the good promises that the Lord your God gave us has ever failed. Every promise God has fulfilled, not one has failed. And he ends that sermon by saying, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Nothing's going to change us. No matter what we've gone through, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Look at Job. At the end of Job's life, um, Job said to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. And uh, he concludes, You said to me, Lord, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears have heard you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself. I repent in dust and ashes. He realized that he ought not to be questioning the Lord. That's a man who has been refined by the Lord. Um, you can look at David, you can look at Solomon, uh, who said at the end of his life, here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all humankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. John the Baptist, who declared, he must increase, I must decrease. Paul, who said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord will reward, award to me on that day. Not just to me, but to everyone. So all of us will go through this refining. And if we persevere, we will, we too will be rewarded. If we're going to be successful in rebuilding our church and to build up this people of God, we need to be, spiritually speaking, trained firefighters. What's going on in your lives? Are you experiencing pain through a relationship, through a situation at work, in your family? as you struggle against some issue, some unanswered prayer. Why? Is it the fire of God's discipline? Is it because the enemy is attacking you? Or is it because the Lord is refining you in the fire? Let's pray. Just in this moment, come face to face with the Lord. Ask of him. Ask the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit to reveal to you why you are feeling pain. I truly believe that if you are sincere and genuine in your desire, God will let you know. And you will know how to respond to this fire. Whether it be to confess and repent, whether it be to stand your ground against the enemy, strap on that armor, whether it be to persevere until the Lord thinks you are ready for the next level of service and faithfulness. Dear Lord, we come before you and offer up ourselves. Lord, put out that pain in our lives. Help us to respond wisely to the pain that we have experienced. Lord, may it bring us closer to you. May it purify us and make us holier and humbler for your service. 
Make us fruitful, Lord. Bless the efforts from our hands. Help us to really, truly partner with one another in rebuilding this church, the people of God, us included. Lord, may we not willy-nilly leave this place until you have dealt with us. Amen. Let's stand as we sing our next song. Please be seated. We come now to a really joyful time in the life of our congregation to the ordination of one of our own. Um, Helen has uh, been elected uh, a member of session and elder of this church since last year. But uh, before, because of COVID, we have delayed uh, her ordination until today. I'm going to invite Helen Ling to come forward. Helen, will you come and stand before the congregation? 
The duties of an elder are to be an example of Christian faith, knowledge, and behavior in the church to all people in all public and private relations to share with the minister and other members of session the gospel discipline and pastoral care of the congregation and the work of disciple-making and leading Christ's people in their mission to the community, the nation, and the world to represent the session of Toronto Chinese Presbyterian Church and Presbytery and Synod and the General Assembly when so commissioned. Helen, here are four questions that I will ask you. Do you believe in God the Father, made known in his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom the Holy Spirit witnesses in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? If you do, say, I do. I do. Do you accept the subordinate standards of this church promising to uphold its doctrine under the continual illumination and correction of the Holy Spirit speaking in scripture? I do. do you accept the government of the church by sessions, presbyteries, synods, and general assemblies? And do you promise to share in and submit yourself to all lawful oversight therein, and to follow no divisive course, but to seek the peace and unity of Christ among your people throughout the Holy Catholic Church? And finally, do you promise in the strength and grace of the Lord Jesus Christ to conduct yourself in your private and public life as becomes his gospel? And do you give yourself diligently and cheerfully to the service of Christ's word, sacraments, and discipline for the furtherance of his reconciling mission in the world? I do. I will now invite you to Kneel down as in the presence of our great King and Shepherd, Jesus, and that this prayer may set you apart and offer you to him to become his servant for this people. And I'm going to invite the ordained elders of the congregation to come forward, that you might lend your hand, lay your hand upon Helen. Will you come now? Come around, Helen, and lay your hands on her. Let us pray together. We praise and glorify you, Lord God Almighty, for you have created us and called us to yourself. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ, your Son. You sustain our lives and our ministry through the presence and power of your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, thank you for choosing Helen Ling to speak your word and lead your people. We thank you for this sister whom you have called to serve as a member of session by the power of your Spirit. Develop in her the gifts of ministry, and may she have the same heart and mind as Christ, serving you in the world as long as she shall live. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, and by the authority of this session, we do now admit you, Helen, to the office of the session of Toronto Chinese Presbyterian Church and charge you to be faithful in exercising your duties and responsibilities to Christ. Amen. You may rise. Will the congregation please rise? Let me ask you to renew your commitment to Christ. Do you renew your allegiance to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, as your prophet, priest, and king? If you do, say, we do. We do. do you receive Helen Ling serving as a member of session as from Christ? and offer her your obedience in the Lord. If you do, say we do. Do you pledge yourselves anew as Christians to be fellow servants with Helen Ling under Christ, standing together for the defense and confirmation of the gospel and going forth into the world by the power of the Holy Spirit? If you do, say we do. 
May the Lord bless you and us and give you grace to keep these vows. Amen. Please be seated, and elders, you may offer your right hand of fellowship to Helen. It's a wonderful time. It's wonderful that our congregation served by so many humble and faithful sisters and brothers in the Lord. Let us pray for the offering. Gracious God, thank you for Helen offering her life to serve you in this way. And we offer to you our time, talents, and gifts in all ways for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray together. The congregational response to merciful God is hear our prayer. Lord our God, your glory is beyond compare. Your mercy is boundless and your love for us is endless. Look upon us now in your compassion. We pray for peace that calms our hearts and saves our souls, and for peace in the whole world and throughout creation. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the stability and unity of the church, for the ministries of your church around the world in these challenging times, and for the General Assembly of Presbyterian Church in Canada meeting this week in Halifax. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for our country, our leaders, and all those in public service for this community, and for every neighborhood and nation, and for all who offer themselves in service for the common good. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of God's creation in its beauty and bounty, for the well-being of every creature and their habitats, for a willingness to change our ways to protect places and people at risk, and for generations yet unborn that they too may thrive. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the safety of those who must travel by land, sea, and air, for those who long to travel but cannot, and for all those who are separated from those they love. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, the suffering, and the isolated, for victims of violence, refugees, and captives and for our protection against all affliction, danger, and distress. Merciful God, hear our prayer. And we pray and give thanks for our leaders, specifically Pastor Allen, who returned from his travels with renewed strength and insights, newly ordained Elder Helen, who has so much love for you and for people, and our new Family Ministries Director, Marion, who will be working with the pastoral team to provide care for the families with children in our congregation. With Christ-centered leadership, help us gain wisdom from the word and honor you in all of our decisions. May we be bold and courageous in speaking the truth in love. Help us persevere and stand firm in our faith in trying times. Merciful God, hear our prayer. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to spend some quality time with the Baldwin Village neighbors this past weekend through the Big Give event. Help us and our co-laborers in faith to spread your love in the community you have called us to serve and to be friends with. Merciful God, hear our prayer. To you, 
Holy God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, belongs all glory, honor, and worship, now and forever, unto the ages of ages. We pray in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, let us rise as we close our service with our last song. all creation groaning it is and is a new creation coming it is is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst it is and is it good that we
Friends, you have heard God's word preached. Now go and live according to his word. And as you do, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day of your lives. Amen. Please be seated. We will close with a word of silent prayer. Amen. Amen. Well, what a joy, uh, as I've said, to be here, uh, worshiping here in this uh, church I call home. Uh, thank you to the worship team. You've led us wonderfully in worship. Thank you. And to each one of you uh, joining us here in worship, and to those of you at home, uh, welcome. And uh, good to worship together. For those of you online, uh, please join the fellowship breakout room and check in with one another as we will do so here. Uh, I hope all of you will, uh, as we did during the passing of the peace, just reach out and uh, greet someone and uh, find out how they are doing. Um, please make sure to make uh, Marion and Stephen feel uh, welcome and also our guests. And I'm, I'm sure there's a, a small group that is taking them out for lunch. If you want to join that, uh, please avail yourselves. So. Uh, let's rise and greet one another again. God bless.